how many different types of solar energy are there and which is the best and uses the least water and causes the fewest use of our natural resources? So, you know, solar power is this, this income that I say we get from space that falls on the, the earth every day through the atmosphere. And it's captured in a bunch of different technologies, to be frank. You know, I include amongst them pretty much all fossil fuels too. They're a form of solar power. It's just the dumbest, most inefficient set. That being plant material from 200 million years ago. So when sunlight fell on earth, you, you saw plants grow and capture that sunlight turn it into stored energy in the form of chemical bonds in plants. We come along 200 million years later, dig it up, burn it, to boil water, to drive these inefficient machine calls turbines, and then ship electricity through wires that lose half of it as heat. You know, pretty dumb, but that's what we do. Wind is another form of solar power. You know, like uh, the, the, the shifting of heat across the earth is what causes wind as we know it. So it's really a response to the heating and cooling of the planet with solar as the driver of that system. Hydrological cycle is actually the same. The evaporation of water off the oceans, which forms clouds and comes down as rain into rivers and dams and such for hydropower. Um, and then there's this you know, new technology set, most of which were developed in the, the, the last century, but um, they have some precedents. One is concentrated solar, or sort of using mirrors and lenses to concentrate solar heat. I mean, you know, and that goes back to ancient Greece. These guys used it as weapons. You know, they fired light onto ship sails and set them alight and all sorts of things, you know, so it was a form of power, I guess. Solar pumping has been a, over a hundred years of technology. Um, and then that modern version of that really is concentrated solar power where we use these parabolic troughs to um, boil water or other fluids, sort of like a steam turbine, but we're using the sunlight instead of burning fuel to do it. So that's concentrated solar power, as it's called. In 1954, at Bell Labs in New Jersey, along came photovoltaics. So this is a whole new brand of technology, a very different approach, basically a, a reverse LED or some kind of semiconductor wherein you put, instead of putting electricity onto something and then shine, a light comes out of it, as with an, an LED, you put light onto something and electricity comes out of it. And it's really that simple. It's you know, <laughs> a magic machine to some. You, you shine a light on it and electricity falls out the other side. Um, as I say, we, we started that in 1954. It really caught on in the 70s for satellites and such. We, we used it for very expensive applications to power satellite and telecommunications and so on. And then it scaled and sort of turn of the century started to become low cost enough for terrestrial applications. Um, as it scaled, we've, we've seen a learning curve uh, where it's dropped in cost about 21% or more for every doubling of volume of manufacturing. So it, as we've become really big in production of solar panels, it's become really, really cheap, and every year it gets cheaper. But as to the, the question of what resources are also utilized, photovoltaics are by far and away the least footprint of all of those. They're, they don't require the water to clean or to boil. I mean, you know, fossil fuels, going back to that form of solar power of a kind, uh, you, you boil water, it turns into steam and goes in the atmosphere. You know, you're literally boiling away lakes and aquifers and all sorts of stuff. A, a, an enormous amount of the surface waters of the United States are wasted through fossil fuel power generation and nuclear power generation, which is one we didn't mention as we ran through the list of technologies and, and is a kind of stardust, if you will, <laughs> the, uh, the uranium. Um, but, uh, yeah, you have very small footprint relative to the other ones in photovoltaics. You do have process chemicals in the manufacturing phase of the photovoltaic life cycle, which are important to control and, and keep closed loop uh, so as not to stop, not to allow toxins into the environment. Um, but, you know, really, there's no pollution coming off these things. There's no carbon dioxide coming out of them. There's no air pollution. Uh, it's, it's not pure, but it's pretty bloody close. If everyone wanted to, how long would it take to make the United States run 100% on sustainable energy? 
Oh, I mean, it, you know, if the United States puts its mind to something, I think it can do it in a remarkably rapid period of time. If you look at the war effort mounted in the 40s, you know, we shifted from, uh, I can't remember exactly how many tens of thousands of men under arms to 15 million who were serving all over the planet in vehicles and vessels that we hadn't even conjured prior, like the jet plane. Um, and we had produced more material for ourselves and our allies than you know, all of human civilization before it. Um, so if, if we mounted that sort of effort f to respond to this threat, this climate threat, we could do this in a matter of years, not decades. Um, even if you don't apply the war footing methodology and instead look at sort of transitions of major economies from one energy system to another, uh, you, you think about um, the adoption of the automobile after the horse-drawn cart in the United States. It was about a 15-year phenomenon. Americans at the turn of the 19th, 20th centuries went around in horse and buggies, if not on foot. Uh, by 1917, 1920, automobiles had taken over electric and internal combustion engine automobiles, but nonetheless, they displaced the horse entirely in a couple of decades. Um, Great Britain, the United Kingdom, got off coal and shifted to gas in the 1980s, not because of an environmental concern, but because Margaret Thatcher wanted to break the unions in the coal mines. Um, but they did it in a decade. The, the country that had invented coal-powered industrialization shifted to another energy system in a decade. So, you know, we put our minds to these things, we can do them. No question. You, you, you lived it with cell phones. You know, landline telephony was the default. There was no question. Uh, who has a landline today? None. No, not one person. You know, like they're barely there. Who doesn't have a cell phone today on Earth? There are more cell phones than humans. And they're supercomputers. They're better, they're cheaper, they work faster and, and all the rest. That's what we're seeing with clean energy, where we've got an incumbency that's very well entrenched. It has a lot of political clout and vested interest behind it, but it provides a shitty service that is expensive and unreliable and killing the planet. And, you know, we're going to shift to the clean options we have in front of us really rapidly, even if we don't have the political will, the sort of, you know, the, the kind of leadership that you had in wartime America demanding it. Uh, clearly, we're not going to get that from this White House, but we are getting the signals from California and from New York that are both committed to 100%. In fact, th 13 governors across the United States in the November 2018 elections ran on 100% platforms. Not soon enough to your question. It's probably not, the political will is not yet where it should be, but we will do this and we'll do it in a surprisingly quick amount of time. I've been in this game long enough to have gone from when the rise of solar was impossible when I started. You know, people thought I was a crazy idiot. Now I've, you know, made a career out of it, started businesses, you know, made money, employed thousands of people, fed their families, created opportunity and wealth across the country and saved people money with the service and seen it go from impossible to inevitable. Now that's the talk, you know, like I said earlier, Shell and Everyone will admit we will go to solar over time, but they think, you know, next century sort of stuff. I just think the challenge is to make it happen immediately. So it has to go from inevitable to immediate. And, and that's, that's the task today.